Atlantic West FX. And right, so for those of you joining us, this is your content warning. Gabe works mostly in creepy horror stuff. Um, just know if you need to take a space, please just know where you're getting into. Okay. <laughs> Told Gabe, if I could do it myself, I don't want it. It's got to be something I couldn't possibly do, but it really required someone with the skill and expertise of effects makeup. My name is Frank Handler, and I have shot five movies with Gabe. And obviously, if you're going to use do five movies with a guy, it's because uh, you like what he's done. And you like the results, and you like working with them. I'm Gabe Bartalis, and we're here at Atlantic West Effects, taking a look at my world of special makeup effects and monsters. Sculpting is one of my favorite parts of the entire makeup effects process because it kind of boils down to just you, your imagination, and the clay in front of you. Once the general shape is roughed out, it's really fun then to see what's in front of you and then to go in with the meticulous detail that's often involved. The charm of a good monster is that it's supposed to be both repulsive and likable at the same time. cycle of life and what is all around us and I try and hang on to that in spirit and psychology and then channel that back into the artwork I make and when that's successful I think you know it because there is a unifying appreciation for a character or a film and I think that comes with paying attention to what's around us also I love monsters and gore Slide. So there's Gabe in his studio. Um, yeah, feel free to pipe in here, Gabe, if you want to talk about any of this stuff or if y'all have questions. Um, I just wanted to show you a few uh, pics from his work. You have a question, Sky? Well, uh, I do. Uh, I was wondering about like the specifics about okay. like. Um, uh, working with like the the mask that like move with the person's face like uh is it uh do you have to put in like metal parts to be able to move them or is it just like attached to their face usually it's attached directly to the face that's always exciting if you have a actor who's good mm -hmm. and who learns how to emote through the foam rubber that the the images the image that's up on the screen now of those four, those are leprechaun faces. And that's exactly what you're talking about. Um, I, I took a cast of the actor so that when I added the clay, I knew and was thinking about the thickness of the rubber, that if it's too thick, even if he's exaggerating his facial expressions, it's not going to move enough. And so in areas where there's high mobility forehead around the mouth, I make the sculpture, which will then become the rubber thinner 
and I add strategic wrinkles and so that the, the rubber is somewhere to collapse. And it's a good question you ask because the, the that's called the prosthetic, the, the foam piece that's attached to them. And for every day of shooting, you make a new piece. So if on a 30 day shoot, a character shoots for 25 days, I, a month before that, each day am making a rubber piece out of the mold. And in the day of shooting, the actor sits patiently in the makeup chair while I carefully glue the prosthetic to his face. Once I color it and maybe put a wig on it, the cool thing is since it's glued to him, he's basically inherited a second skin. So when he you know, snarls or furrows his brow, the rubber has no choice but to follow along. And that's where it becomes really exciting because this new being is suddenly animated and moving in front of you. It's cool. Yeah. I must have, I, I have to imagine like just making a character and then putting it on someone's face and seeing them make it come alive. It's awesome. It is. It's kind of the punchline to the whole process. And that's why it's exciting if you get to work with a talented actor because then it's kind of like a collaboration. It's your artwork, but it would fall flat on the canvas if he didn't bring it to life or she. And when they do, it, it's really, uh, it's rewarding. It, it's, it's neat because like making a baby between two people, a third character has evolved, mm -hmm. you know? Not that y'all would know anything about that, right? <laughs> it is high school. Um, <laughs> that for jokes, great. Is, uh, what I like about special makeup effects and making creatures is that it allows for an outlet of many different type of art forms. So if you have a big imagination and you daydream about characters, uh, this is an outlet for it. If you're an illustrator or a sculptor, that's some of the first steps in all of this is to sketch out or like a lot of these images are the clay version of what I'm making. If you're into getting dirty and uh, learning about new materials, the next process is mold making. So once your sculpture is done, you mix either cement or rubber and you pour it over your sculpture to kind of commit it to, to, to make a mold of it. And then you go through a process to uh, fabricate the piece out of, let's say, rubber, if it's going to be a prosthetic. And then if you have painting skills or, or into makeup, the two tend to overlap in special makeup effects. You then have to paint the piece. And then sometimes there's hair work involved or making acrylic teeth. So for me, I enjoy all those different steps of it. And it's interesting because in Los Angeles where I am, there is an industry for this and a demand for it. So there will be people who come to my studio who actually specialize in one of those 12 categories I said. They may be just mold makers. Others may work with just hair. Others may work with dental acrylic. And it's a freelance world. We find the jobs as they come to us and then I hire crew job specific, committing them to sometimes a couple weeks to sometimes several months till we deliver the film project. And it's interesting because it's probably oddly one of the last kind of nomadic in a sense that people know they they jump around shop to shop and work for these increments of time and um but for me it, it it's wonderful because you get to meet a revolving door of people and all have wonderful skill sets and um it's it's a nice community of people artists totally Totally. And because I, because I talk to these guys a lot about this a lot, like you probably don't enjoy every person that you collaborate with. Right. But you work together to do something bigger than yourself. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it, it, it's uh, at the end of the day, it's a job. Uh, I feel it's a privileged job because I'm able to channel the arts and my imagination into it. Um, mm -hmm. But of course, sometimes you run into unpleasant people or, in the film industry, you know, the industry's torn right down the middle between artists and bureaucrats who are just in it for the money. And you you run into all sorts of, of battles where you're trying to make your artwork as good as possible. 
and there's a restrictive deadline. The nice thing is that if, if for some reason you're with people that aren't the greatest, it's all over within a few months and then it starts up again. There you go. There you go. Okay. I had to get on my teacher soapbox. All right. Let's sure. look at, oh, wow. Look at this one, you guys. Shit. Yeah. I'll edit this guy's out. called Two Face. I wanted to experiment on could I make a sculpture that aesthetically works where if you covered one mouth, it would look right. If you covered the other mouth, it would work right. And then what would happen if both were exposed? Sometimes I'll do sculptures basically as exercises to test out or try a, an idea I have or a concept. That hair is so good too. It's so real. Is that real hair? It's real hair into a, a lace piece. So a huge amount of time went into that. The hairstylist was actually, it's called tying the hair, two hairs at a time into a very fine netting. Whoa. Yeah. That's meticulous. Wow, okay. Cool, okay, what do we got next? Oh yes, okay, so Gabe is also a director and filmmaker. And these are some photos from a film that he made, St. Bernard. Um, so let's take a look. And I hope I, I'm pretty sure I got the figures in the right place. Sure. So, um, is this, this is one of, this is on a person, yes? This is on an actor and um, it's a combination of heavy prosthetics and body paint on him. And the idea is that he's a kind of a, my distorted version of a police chief, incredibly unhelpful to our protagonist. And um, yeah, St. Bernard is a film that came out in 2019. It's a fantasy horror film I made with very surrealistic themes and the idea is my imagination grew bigger than characters and their wardrobe i began to write narrative and i've always loved filmmaking so i thought this is my second feature film um it'd be fun to create universes for the characters i'm making as well so uh it took about six years to make i shot it independently shot it on film um, and, uh, it's kind of like a David Lynch meets horror kind of thing. It's, uh, uh, very fun to do your own, uh, films. If someone gets a chance to do it, there's a lot of room for personal expression. Um, I couldn't resist slipping in my best friend working on this costume, uh, collaborating with Gabe, uh, which is the connection that I made. So there's my friend Mia and a, what is this, a $600 suit? Yeah, it's a money suit for a fantasy sequence where a, uh, uh, the talent is in a church and the church seems to be, the priest inside seems to be more concerned about his uh, donorship than saving his soul. And it manifests itself visually in an outfit completely made of real money and he's pursued down the streets of wall street in new york city by a, a greedy priest <laughs> that is so meta i love that i love that yeah. um and then this guy is a little creepy i love how you look up uh ben okay is that how i get you to put no, okay <laughs> um, um in in doing makeup effects sometimes we're asked to make uh, a bloody wound. Sometimes we're asked to make a character makeup. Sometimes it's asked to make a replica of a real person. And sometimes the actors we work with are real kids. They're like just bizarro in their own right. And that leads to exciting casts like this one. Um, <laughs> this is okay. made out of... To make this face while you were making the cast. Yes, they, they oh. hold the expression for about nine minutes while the impression cream goes on. And uh, some of you may know the cream, it's called alginate. It's the same stuff a dentist will put in your mouth if he's taking an impression. This is oh, just yeah. calibrated to go a little slower and allows us to get every detail from wrinkles to skin pores so that as we create a lifelike reproduction, uh, all that information is transferred. Gabe also works with fine artists. 
Uh, one of them being Matthew Barney. It's pretty far out stuff. This I find this is this is also pretty creepy, but fascinating. And so this was so can you talk a bit about collaborating with artists? So it's like a dialogue between your skill set and the artist's vision, and then y'all meet in the middle, or is it different per artist? Like some artists are like, do this, I don't care what you think. Is it more of a dialogue? What what do you what I think you it it it, it, yeah, it'll touch upon three categories. Um, you know, what? there's an artist who lives in Norway who just calls me up and literally says, Gib, just do those things like you do so good. And then <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. And then his people will talk details. And it's a little weird because, you know, I, at the end of the day, I'm a commercial artist. I'm there to serve the client. So some direction would be helpful. But then I, I'm like, well, I'll take it because he just gives me free reigns. Then there's the other type of fine artist who will micromanage and be at the studio every three days and kind of make me insane with why are you using that tool? Why would you do that? And I have to explain that's just one tenth of the process. And you know, the, the ones that go from pest to enlightened are the ones who open their ears and get excited and learn about the process. That's kind of exciting. Um, that's probably where Matthew Barney falls in. Matthew wants to know what the work is and is very involved in it and then gets really excited to learn about the ins and outs and begins to stack on it. He will then take that process and request it in the next project and then grow from there. So you know, it, it's it's a little weird because sometimes we build stuff and an artist's name goes on it and you see it at a gallery with a giant price tag on it. You're like, whoa, that's kind of weird. He didn't do much on that. But I understand it's kind of always been that way, even at the end of Rodin's sculpture days or Henry Moore in England, two thirds or the last third of his life, it was mostly assistants doing the work and, and they kind of become a brand. So yeah. if you're okay with that if you're okay creating stuff but most of the fine artists I work with are actually very generous with their praise and making it very clear to the press that me and a talented team have brought it to life and um, uh, it's just one of those detailed strange aspects of it and I guess it's the same as somebody walking through their fancy house saying to their visiting friends, look at my house. They obviously didn't lay the cinder block. They didn't do the wiring. They did not put in the plumbing, but it's their choice. They've, they've, they paid for it. It's their house. So in a weird way, you could pair it up like that. Um, but it, it's very exciting to work in the world of fine art because it allows me to jump from a film project to a photo shoot, to a fine art project. And I'm kind of a, a sucker for just getting to do the work I like to do. So for me, it, I just feel like it's many different canvases I could explore. Yeah, there's a lot of artists that, and, and designers do that too. You know, like if they want to include some embroidery on their work, they'll send it out to a, someone to embroider it for, you know. So it's, it's I, I found that really interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, Miss Carrie's got her hand up. I do. I I had a question um, regarding like the fine art process. Like, how does that work? Would so would the artist draw a sketch of it or do develop it in like a three D design program and then send it to you where it gets turned into the actual life form or mm -hmm. or many different ways? It it's kind of all of the above. One artist I work a lot with, Doug Aiken. He has a full design studio and they do these immaculate, beautiful renderings. I did these uh, glowing um, public telephones for him. So everything was reproduced out of white frosted plastic. Later. And when they sent an image to me, I said, uh, well, hey, can we get access to that phone so I could do the measurements? He said, Gabe, that's not real. My people made that. I'm like, wow, that looks great. So they were very specific, right down to pretty close what they wanted the measurements to be. 
So we had to use our skill set and research materials and the longevity of them and how to create this. So then on another spectrum, someone like Matthew Barney may do some kind of chicken crawl sketches, but which are really helpful because his ideas are really abstract. And he'll be like, this is kind of what I'm thinking. And I'll be like, ah, okay. I would have never picked up that you're going there without that sketch. So what I'll do from that sketch is I may make a tighter sketch or I may go right to clay and do a, a miniature or a maquette and present it and say, this is kind of where I'm feeling this is going. Am I in the right direction? And then he'll get excited and be like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're, you're executing it better than I want. And then on a third extreme would be like the Norway guy, Bjorn Malgard, who just says, Gabe, go. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh, all right. Internet, internet. Um, let's. I'll see Can you hear me? There you are. There you are. Yeah. Okay, great. Sorry, we have a little glitchy glitch. Mm. Um, I wanted to show some of this work he did with a musician you may be familiar with, David Byrne, um, and worked on these kind of facial prosthetics for their album cover. Um, why? Is, was this D David's vision or? Yeah, he um, reached out and said he wanted uh, these facial prosthetics. And as he described it, he wanted it really subtle so that his fans would just stare at the album cover and try and figure out what was going on with it. And that with St. Vincent's, it's a little more extreme. So right. I, I had said, let's kind of, I pitched, how about like a Grecian kind of angular features, really subtle. And on her kind of widen the brow a little like a hillbilly almost and make the side of her jaw broken. And they were both cracking up. They, they thought it was good. And and, uh, and then we went ahead and I molded both their faces and sculpted the features. And um, yeah, it was a, a really funny shoot. Yeah, I, I love that. I, I'm glad you pointed that out, the difference, because I, I, hers is more apparent and his is kind of like, is that real or what's yeah. going on? There? Yeah. Um, there's that piece uh, Gabe was talking about before, the glowing. Right. Mm -hmm. booth, and I was in the, I was able to visit when he was working on this, this beautiful piece, really neat idea. Uh, what is that made of? It's a type of two-part urethane. It's um, very, very strong. In the art world, we have to consider the archival because people buy them for their collections and the ideas they last. So it's a very stable type of urethane that you can add pigment to. So in this case, I was adding tiny bits of white to try and get that waxy look that it still conducted light. Like you could see the Hand, the bottom of the handle slightly glowing and the phone cord is lit up with a fiber optic and it would go through different programs where the, the phone was sometimes there completely illuminated and other parts would go on and off. Um, so, uh, and then the outer casings are sheet plastic that we created forms to heat it and bend it into shape. Wow, very cool. Okay, I think we're almost to the end here. Oh my God. Okay, so I had to show you because I know what you care about or know about maybe. Yeah. So Gabe has worked on Kim and Kanye's Halloween costumes for two years. Uh, rest in peace. We wish them the best. Because um, aren't they best that we have? Yes. Okay, sorry. Um, so I just thought it would be cool to show you these things. Look at this. Spiders, spiders. And my favorite image um and she gabe said something about this at the beginning of like you got to find an actor who emotes through it and i will give her this she is emoting beauty through this whatever you want to call this i don't <laughs> spider so that they have a bunch of eyes um okay they're clearly traumatized but i think that was my last slide uh I think she was hesitant to wear that, right? Uh, no, it, it's it's bizarre. They're really uh, into it. You know, I, I'm almost more gun shy 
thinking they're not going to have the patience or they don't want to go for it, but they're, they, they're kind of like, we want this to be an event. I think she uh, takes her Instagram world very seriously. So she wants these images to be strong. They're not in them for very long. They do the photo shoots and then they maybe put on different outfits if they're uh, trick or treating in the neighborhood, you know, or if they're having a party, but they kind of go for it. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. So that's the slideshow. So should we, let's get into it. I mean, yeah. YOLO. YOLO. That's right, Bo. You only live once. Okay, so I got this because clearly I miss being a drama teacher and working with a real drama teacher and not, you know, with hostages in my, they've all been forced to take. <laughs> um, That's great. He's going to walk me through it because he's a pro, right? Okay, so I told you the first thing that Gabe asked me to get was a skull. Alas, poor Yorick. Does anyone get that? <laughs> Thank you. It's the drama class. Isn't it Hamlet? It's Hamlet, yes. So why do I need a skull to do makeup, Gabe? Well, a skull, if you're doing a makeup on yourself or on someone's face, it's really at the basic core of it all. It's about highlight and shadow. And that's a great skull for this, because if you look, you could see the deepest shadows in the eyes the nose socket and on the return of the jaw, the depth in there. And then the highlights are obviously the white of the bone and it's at its brightest at the highest points. And those are worth considering if you're, let's say like Elise is gonna do today, a skull makeup on herself. So it's wonderful to uh, have research material and that's a, a very fun part of my job is when we know we're going into a job, is to get the books or go on, to, on the internet and find images, get inspiration, find our direction that we're going with. And sometimes it's a matter of simple anatomy reference and other times it's looking to the animal kingdom or medical books. In this case, Elise has a 3D skull right in front of her, so it's perfect. So I think today we're gonna focus on uh, uh, jaw, uh, cheekbones up. Keep bones up. Okay, I'm ready. I got my clown makeup because I'm a clown. Should I start with that or the black? Start with some clown makeup. Okay. And uh, if you have a sponge or your fingers, whatever you'd like to do. I got a sponge. Okay. Great. Okay. Start working that sponge in there. Yeah. And start on your forehead and uh, nice and heavy. Start moving that around. Get a nice, uh, nice pass of white on there. This is gonna be the biggest area of real estate you're doing. So take your time, nice and heavy, that's great. Well, I don't do makeup, you got, oh, okay. I love it, I can hear Finn rehearsing his song. No, I'm into it, keep singing. <laughs> it gives me joy. I'm still listening to that Michael Oliver speech. Good, good. So I think you want to not do your eyes or your eye sockets, but go around them. Come on around on your cheekbones. Yeah, okay. and you scoot that mask down another half inch if you want. Because what we're going to do is we're going to transition with that mask. That's great. There you go. I would assume maybe this is next. What is that? This is the black. Black is great. So start with... Uh, you're gonna do it with one, you're gonna close an eye, do it on your upper lid. You could go pretty heavy there. And then with your fingers or a different sponge, you're gonna feather it up as if you're heading toward your eyebrow, but you don't really wanna come out over the ridge. You wanna stay in the socket. Okay. Oh, okay. But I'm doing this on my lid, you said. Yep, go on the lid. Excellent. <laughs> Y'all, this is one of those things where I'm in the middle of it and I'm like, was this my idea? <laughs> oh, 
Where are we at, Gabe? How are we doing? Uh, it, it's good. It, what you could do is get the upper lid and the surrounding socket and then blink it out a little bit and then look up and you want to get the same color underneath on your lower lid. We forgot, I forgot to put, oh, good gosh. <laughs> I forgot to put a fake tattoo on my face. That's okay. I'm going to pull it up when we're done. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, under your eye. Okay. So I, yeah, you need some un un underneath each eye. <laughs> you look like the Joker. Well, yeah. Yeah. Go, you're next. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 So now what you want to do is take a look at that skull. We're going to work on here on your, uh, come around the forehead. You could see how you're head dips back. So we want to create some shade right in here. Nope, more on the sides. It's basically your temples. Okay, Keep sorry. going, yep. Two sides on the temples, right in here and right in here. Oh, yeah. Okay, I know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like that skull has it architecturally, but they didn't paint it in. Right here? Nice. Yep. Yeah, the temple, yeah. You're, you're gonna kind of do like a C almost. Yep, excellent. And on the inner line toward the eye side, you could go pretty pretty bold there. Is this your first uh, talk someone through makeup over Zoom? <laughs> Cause it's mine. <laughs> uh, as, as this type of tutorial, yeah, that looks great. Okay, cool. You think zombies are symmetrical? No. I like that one's a little. Okay. Should we do this? Oh, this one a little too close. Okay. Yep. What you could do is on your ridge, any of that, and even above toward uh, right here, the line, there would be a little shading and almost across like a, a extended W over your uh, eyebrow. Yeah. Okay, that like could be the, very a little light, yeah. That's the okay. right area, though. Is this giving me a unibrow? That would not good. It's fine. I think. I think let's let's keep working with it. With it. No. And Whatever. what you could do now is I would scoot your face mask down as much as you dare, and we want to go heavy, heavy black underneath your cheekbone so that that black matches your, yeah, right? As low as you can so that black crashes into your uh, face covering. And you could be really bold with that color, real thick. Okay, I think we need some blood. I think we need some blood. Let's, uh, do you have any other color or just uh, the black and the uh, white? I have this gray. Oh, so that we'll it. put the gray on at the end. Why don't we take the black and literally just make a little nick, a little one inch line on the top of your forehead, a cut. That's going to represent a cut. So we add a little depth to it. You know, I could quickly, why don't I quickly make, here, let's do this. I can do this quick. Sass. I got nothing but sass for y'all. Nothing but sass. Watch. Are you not entertained? Joe? Actually. Whoa, wait. Okay. Great. Do you have fake blood? Yes. Can Is it time for blood? blood? Let's go for the blood and let's, uh, if you have a Q-tip or something, See if you could dress it right into the center of that, and you could even train it so it starts dripping down a little. Okay, this is super thick. Good. Okay. Should I do the zombie part with Will? Yeah. Okay. 
I could compromise that with you, Will. What are you watching? Uh huh. You texting your girlfriend? Oh, okay. I don't know. Over Gmail. Ew. Gabe's unimpressed. He's like, no, we need more cord. <laughs> I'm just gonna like. Let's just like get it all in there. Yeah. Ooh, uh, Miss Perry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I would love to just like pour this on your face. Well, uh, what, give me some over here. Wait, I'm a, what? Uh, you have napkins? I got it all. You got it all. All right, give me over here. And then, because I want to honor your break too. You don't, you don't need a break? Okay. Well, we're still supposed to hear Michael today, yeah. but we can push it. It's up to you. It's looking good. Do you have a, a water bottle near you by chance? I have a cup with water in it. Perfect. Once you have the blood in place, put your fingertips in that water and flick it on your face so it hits that blood and it's going to move that blood around a little so it doesn't look so staged. You're going to find its little bits are going to run and you can even with your fingertips dab at it. Nice. It's going to start making it move around in a little bit more organic of a way. It's going to get a little sloppier and more real. That's, that's good. Let's go coming out of your eyes. Oh, oh my God. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Would you consider thinning the blood before you use it? Or is it better? You, to you it? could. It depends on what you're doing. A lot of times we'll have three to four different types of blood. We'll have what it looks like you have is gel blood that literally yeah. where you put it, it stays. And then we have thin blood that you could put on and it'll run down. Then we have almost watery blood if we have to shoot it through a tube. Then sometimes we have brown blood if it's a corpse lying in a field. You Ooh. can't see the horrified look on my face. That's so fun. This is pretty fun though. I, I cannot look at myself as I look at things. Uh, but <laughs> holy cow. Can you even see that? There's a black? Yeah. It's reading pretty good through the computer. I mean, <laughs> um, should I powder now? Yeah, what you could do is just lightly powder. Um, even if it hits a little of the blood, it's okay. What it's going to do is if you had to, let's say, slide that face piece on and off or a different wardrobe, the powder will set that grease paint. So it's not going to be as not moving around as much. I have no idea what I'm Obviously great. I can't all over your leg. I can't real wait. light. Yeah, real light. <laughs> I don't know that right. Good Lord. <laughs> Yeah, you really only need a dash. Oh, look now you tell me. Look at it. Look at her. God, I look. I look like a zombie. Yeah, it's good. It's good. You you want it to be a little sloppy and dirty. That's good. Wow. Oh, I like the feeling of this. Uh, maybe. with your, uh, at least close your eyes and with your fingers smear the black more on your lids. Yeah, really get it in there. Good. Good thing I don't have to ride Bart today. How are you getting? <laughs> I'm driving. Uh, that's why. So I yeah, got... you're looking good. If, so if you were going in for a photo shoot or a film, we would dress the blood like this to kind of train the blood where it's going to be. And then after rehearsals and the lighting, and if you were getting ready to shoot, I would be standing right outside a frame with a spritz bottle and fresh blood. And right before they roll, it's very common on film, they'll even say last looks and a hairstylist will check a, a hairstyle, uh, a straight makeup artist will check the makeup. I will check the special effects makeup and then they're very close to rolling film. So you always look kind of fresh from shot to shot. That is so cool. 
Um, sorry if I scared anyone. Um, now I gotta go. Now I'm gonna go talk one on one with the students who owe me work. Any Very cool. Very cool. Let's give them a hand. Woo! All of y'all, this is a working artist. So um, it's really cool to, to learn from people who are able to incorporate getting paid with their passion. So kudos to you, Ben. My pleasure. Happy to be there. And you'll. Uh... You'll start to see ads for a movie called Army of the Dead on Netflix. And I made a zombie horse for that, similar to the images you have. Oh, dude, tell me the name of it again. Army, Army of the Dead. They just started the advertisement. Okay, very cool. Oh my God. She's Thank you for letting us participate. It was super cool to see this. And yeah, whole... it was pretty awesome. Thanks. <laughs> so cool. So cool. So we gotta finish Thank you class. so much for coming. Thank you. My so pleasure. <laughs> this was super fun. Thanks, Gabe. Thank you. Absolutely, Elise. Right.